Good morning. Welcome on this, the fifth Sunday of the Easter season. It is also a day that we will be lifting up the mission that uh, some of our young people do uh, in Camden, New Jersey. After the hymn of the day, there will be a presentation uh, by, um, uh, let's see, Lucian Milosak and Kelly, no, yes, Kelly and Maisie Marshall. Um, so they'll be coming forward after the hymn of the day. And that brings me to um, point out to you that there is a little switch O in the, in, the, uh, in the hymnal. After the homily, we will go immediately into the hymn of the day. And then at the end of the hymn of the day, we will have the mission presentation. So um, if you are able, I invite you to stand in body and spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns forever.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the seventh chapter of Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young, of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsive psalm is Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5, 15 through 16. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O 
the Lord, God of truth. reading from the second chapter of first Peter. Like a newborn infant, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture. See, I am lying in Zion in a, a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe. The stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, that I am the Father, in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name, you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Congregation, please be seated. And um, with the children in the um, children's singing group, um, Hope, Choir Hope, right? 
children's choir, Expressions of Hope. Please come forward.
few expressions of hope. That was wonderful. Great day for fishing, too, today. So, did you hear it this morning? In my father's house, there are many rooms. How many rooms are in your house? I have quite a few rooms in my house, way more than any one person and two dogs could possibly use. Jesus says, in my father's house, there are many rooms, or in this morning's translation, many dwelling places. You see, with this imagery, Jesus is trying to comfort the disciples because he knows, he knows that in a few days he'll be gone from them. So he offers them hope by telling them that where I'm going, there will be a place for you. And you don't even have to worry about finding it, he assures them, because when that time comes, I will come for you and I will show you the way. In fact, I'll take you there myself. But as so often happens, well, the disciples didn't get it. They didn't get the point. Was he talking about the governor's mansion in Jerusalem? That palace would surely be his once he was able to overthrow Rome. And they had no doubt, the disciples, that there were tons of rooms in there. Never satisfied, Thomas, of course Thomas, pushes for more information. There is always one in every crowd, isn't there? Lord, Thomas says, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Well, we know, do we not, from our Bible studies, that Jesus never gave a straight answer to those who questioned his authority his motivation, his reasoning. And there was no exception in this gospel lesson either. He answers them with words that might have seemed, seemed a bit strange, even to them. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life, he tells them. These words probably sound familiar to us and maybe even a bit comforting. But try to imagine, if you will, what they would have sounded like to his followers, to those first century ears. Now, we can't go back in time to put ourselves into these first century thinkers. But we can look at these fundamental words from Jesus with the benefit of what it is we know about him now, his life, his ministry, his sacrifice, his mission. In these words that Jesus uses, I am the way, the truth, the life. Well, it's a progression. That is to say that, that when we hear them, they really move us from one aspect of Jesus' impact on his disciples and the very early church, for that matter, to the next. These words, you see, are a testament to the Christian journey, a testament and a challenge. These words call us to a deeper understanding of Jesus and to his meaning in our lives. I am the way, he says. I am the road. I am the highway, the turnpike, Route 309, Route 202, Tollgate Road, the Schuylkill and the PA Turnpike. I am Old Bethlehem Pike and Main Street. I am, Jesus told him, whatever way you use to get home. I am your way. You see, the way was actually one of the very first names that the earliest followers of Jesus called themselves, the way. Those first followers believed that walking in Jesus' footsteps was the channel, the path that would connect them with the here and the there the between now and then, the yet and the not yet. The journey between Nazareth and Jerusalem, that's what that word meant, then and now. I am the road. Well, we walk and drive on roads every day, don't we? Most of us probably don't give any thought to them unless they're riddled with potholes. 
are covered with snow and ice, which thankfully we didn't have too much to deal with this year. We only pay attention to our ways when they're not serving us well, when they're uneven or slippery or detoured or like 309 under never-ending construction. Otherwise, the roads we travel are simply there to help us move from one place to another, point A to point B. When Jesus says, I am the way, he is forcing us to look deeper. He's telling us that he is the road, the road that leads from where we are to God. And just like the highways and the byways we travel, we probably don't think too much about Jesus being the way. That is until our trip becomes difficult. And for many of us, these last two years plus are maybe some of the most difficult roads we've ever had to travel. Have you been calling on the name of Jesus in prayer, in thanksgiving, in desperate pleas? Most of us do that when our lives feel like they are tumbling out of control, when we're faced with troubles and trials that seem to be beyond our control. Surely the disciples must have felt the tension and fear as Jesus became more and more rebellious towards the temple leaders. They must have felt that it was going to end badly and it was going to come to a head sooner rather than later. And so Jesus tells them which road to take to get safely where they need to be when the inevitable happens. He tells them that he is the road, he is the way, he is the one that will lead them to the presence of God. That road is marked with a cross, we know, and the name on that highway is Jesus of Nazareth. I am the truth is the next part of Jesus' answer. <coughs> In Greek, aletheia, and as is often the case when we translate from Greek into English, the Greek word has much deeper implications than our simple English word truth. Aletheia means an unveiling, an uncovering of something that lies hidden. It also means awake. Maybe that's where we get our current buzzword, woke. Maybe aletheia truth means to go through life being in the present and taking part in what's going on around us. Jesus knew that truth is relationship. It means not putting rose-colored glasses on to see what's not really there, or conversely, what really is there. It means to be open to others' point of view, not closing yourself up, being woke. We cannot go on and deny what's going on in God's creation. If our eyes were not opened by the numbers of infected and dead during the pandemic, then I don't know what will open them. If the violence and out of control mass shooting don't, shootings don't awake of, awaken us, I don't know, I can't think of what will. Eight more innocents massacred in Allen, Texas yesterday. How much more? When will enough be enough? There are wars. There are wild and devastating weather events, tornadoes in places they've never been before, a dust storm in Illinois. Illinois, not the desert. There is a lack of civility. This is perhaps the most difficult for me to understand. There's a lack of civility that we have never experienced before. People are no longer afraid to say the quiet part out loud. There are ugly truths facing us today. There is sadness and pain and grief and despair. But there's also joy. This week, we'll hear our young members talk about a mission trip they took last year and the one that they're planning to take again this summer. 
Next week, Trinity will celebrate the many talented folks who lead our worship with song. In June, we'll celebrate with three young teens as they reaffirm their baptisms at the rite of confirmation. We'll lift up our graduates and we'll give thanks for nine, nine new acolytes. Our road, our way has not been easy. We've been dealt a global pandemic. And in the midst of that, a pastor left, leaving you in transition for what must seem like forever. But we have traveled our road, our way, faithfully. Jesus tells us that he is the one who comes along and offers us a way to travel without illusions or foolish optimism. Jesus offers us a way to God through truth, a way to be woke to the reality of hatred, discrimination, violence, persecution, and intolerance. Jesus offers us the way that enables us to be realistic about ourselves and to realize and be realistic about the world that we find ourselves in. The Hebrew idea of truth is firmness and reliability. So whether in Greek or in Hebrew, Jesus is the one who offers us a place to be, a place to stand firm. Jesus is the truth that we find in the presence of God. Finally, Jesus tells us, tells his disciples, I am the light. I am the life. I am the one who offers you the fullness of life. I am the one who offers life in the present moment. Jesus calls us to a life of meaning renewal. We all know that life is messy. If we didn't know it before, we sure know it now. Probably messier now than maybe ever before. And then along comes Jesus this morning telling us that he is the life. He is our life and he is with us, even when we're struggling and feeling lost and feeling alone. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. What better words could we hear today on this Mission Sunday? Jesus is the one who leads us along those pathways and leads us to God's presence. Jesus comes into our midst. He comes to us and offers us renewal so that we might have life and have it abundantly. He wakes us to truth and reminds us that life with Christ is at the very center of our faith. And he gives us life, a life of freedom and love and forgiveness. The words of this morning's gospel strengthen us and they fortify our faith and strengthened and fortified, we are able to reach out and lead others to the way of truth and life. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for those words today when we need to hear them so very much. Amen. of the day, which is gather us in.
I would invite you now to be seated for our presentation. And I would invite Kelly, Maisie, Marshall, and Lucian Milosoff to come forward to lead us in that presentation. So glad you're here with us, and I'm glad you brought visitors to support you as well. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Kelly Mitchell, and I'm one of the adult leaders of the One Dream Mission Team. Uh, our mission team is made up of youth and leaders from here at Trinity, as well as First UCC in Quakertown and Augustus Lutheran in Trap. Um, it's been a few years since I've been up here before you presenting. Um, last time was in 2019 that we were able to take a, uh, a youth mission trip there. So um, how it goes is I'll tell you about the trip. I'll probably cry at some point. Feel free to ignore that or cry along, whichever is good for you. <laughs> um, so our mission trip in 2020 was canceled due to the global pandemic. And then last, uh, in 2021, we were able to send a handful of adult leaders um, to go on mission and uh, continue to help the people of Camden. Could we turn the lights down just a little? Because it's really hard to see the screen. Ah, perfect. Thank you, Michael. Wonderful. Can you guys still see the read? Oh, yes. <laughs> perfect. Um, the pa this past summer, we were able to, once again, take youth on the mission trip to help the good people of Camden, New York, um, not New Jersey. We don't take teens there. Um, so in Camden, we work with Cluster 13. Uh, Cluster 13 is a faith-based faith community service organization that helps families maintain their homes so that they can be safe, warm, and dry. They can then stay in their own homes instead of being displaced by old age, disability, or major economic problems. This year, our theme was Peace, Love, and Promises. We wore rainbow tie-dyes, and we built our weekly devotions around our theme scripture, which was Genesis 9:16. When I see the rainbow in the sky, I will always remember the promise that I have made to every living creature. This year, we had 12 members attend mission. It was my first year not going on the mission, uh, but we did send five adults and seven youth. Only one youth from Augustus had come to mission before um, in the summer of 2019. So we called it a rebuilding year. Um, we, we, everybody was pretty much brand new, uh, learning skills uh, from the beginning, learning how our mission team works. Although the rest of the youth were new, including our Trinity members, Maisie Mitchell and Lucian Millisock, who are both set to be returning to Camden this summer. Um, they will tell you more but, um, about each site, but we were able to help three families in the Camden area, um, replacing a roof that was failing, replacing flooring inside of a trailer that had water damage. Um, part of the team split off to a second site that uh, needed siding reinstalled to make their house weather tight. The third family was a victim of a fire um, on their property and the homeowners needed help clearing up the debris so they did not get fined. Uh, while we were there, while they were there, a local news reporter came and interviewed uh, Tom from Cluster 13 and also met with our group and interviewed them. Uh, she had lived near Camden her whole life and had heard of Cluster 13, but was very surprised to learn that the youth from another state willingly give up a week of their summer to come and provide service in her area and that they wanted to come back year after year. Uh, now I'll let Lucian and Maisie um, tell you about their trip, and then I'll pop back in. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Maisie. I was on the second site where um, we were replacing siding, and we mostly removed siding that was damaged and it wasn't installed correctly. So we were taking that off, and it was very much a learning process because none of us had done anything like that. Um, and I remember John and Gary were telling us to watch YouTube videos, actually, on how to do it. Um, and over time, it was just really fun to learn what we were doing as we did it. And we really did end up making the place really nice. Um, my favorite thing was mostly the community of everything. Um, we worked all day 
and it was nice to come back and then we're all just playing around games and just basically singing and just doing everything that kids do. Good morning. Uh, my name is Lucian. I worked on the first and third site. The first site was where the top of the roof was a little messed up. So we replaced some of the metal roof with a better piece, more new and more reliable. Um, and then we replaced a toilet in the first site. The third site was more of a disaster, more dirty. Um, it was filled with ash and like a bunch of soot and like there was a big pile of rubble. So we started shoveling up all the ash and soot out of there, got all the metal that was in that pile too, put it in a pile and we moved a bunch of the center blocks out of the way too. My best part was when we played manhunt in the church. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, the mission team has uh, two honor awards that are passed out to the youth. Um, the first Don Fitzpatrick Award um, was, is, reads, presented to the youth who has shown the most courage, caring, and accepted the greatest challenge. The recipient of this award was picked by the entire group, and last year the award went to Elizabeth Wentworth from Augustus. Um, here's the crying part. Um, the Caitlin Purcell Award Reads, presented to a young adult in recognition of their attitude, effort, determination, and motivation. It's a award near and dear to us um, as Caitlin passed away um, and she was a former participant. Um, the recipient this year is Nate Mitchell. Thank you. Um, so lastly, um, the, our golf outing this year is June, um, but uh, early June, it's the first Friday in June. Our, uh, our golfer quantity is full for the first time ever, which is very, very exciting. Um, but if you have any business that is close to you or that you're involved with, if you wanna sponsor, you can sponsor carts, you can sponsor um, many different things. There's uh, flyers and information uh, on our website, I think, and uh, out front in the lobby. And, uh, or just contact me or John Millisock. We both have information about that if you have any like, little things that you want to put in the golfer's gift bags, anything to promote your business or help out the team. That's wonderful. Um, and then uh, if you're interested, if you have youth that are interested, um, completing grade eight uh, or older, uh, just talk to John or I, we'd be happy to talk to you about the trip. It's the last full week in July. Uh, we leave the 22nd. And then a quick thank you to thank the other leaders for their time, effort, organization on this trip. Uh, thank you to our prayer pals for sending extra prayers during an emotionally and physically heightened week. Thank you to the other parents for their amazing kids and it become like our own and a huge thank you to our congregation, you for all your support and encouragement throughout the year. on this trip. Um, as you can imagine, when you see, when you see those slides, uh, there is a lot of work that needs to be done, and none of that work comes uh, free. You know, we say ministry is not free. 
Um, we, think, we think we can do all sorts of things in Jesus' name, and in fact we do, but many of them come with price tags. So if you're interested or willing to, to uh, donate to that fund, please see um, John or Kelly after the service. I'm sure they will take any support that you might have to offer them. So thank you for coming. Thank you for participating in the service. And thank you for sharing with us. And as, as we said, the, the next trip is the last week in July. Last, last week in July. I know we will be sending the, our kids, Kelly and Lucian, on the 16th, I think, of July from our worship service, blessing them and sending them on their way. So now at this point in time, I'll invite you to uh, stand in spirit or body uh, as we recite the words of the Nicene Creed to profess our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, who begotten not made for us. our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, who is worshiped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us play, pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of life, strengthen your church to proclaim your gospel even in the times of trouble. As we remember Stephen, we give thanks for diaconal ministry Bless all deacons and strengthen them for their bridge-building ministry between church and world. Hear us, O God. Creating God, you show your steadfast love through mighty waters, towering mountains, verdant fields, and arid deserts. Protect the Earth's diverse habitats from the forces of pollution, erosion, extinction, and global warming. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, your spirit guides us into all truth. Give wisdom to the world and local leaders and organizations as they begin, build, or renew relationships. Strengthen leaders and aid organizations in areas needing to be rebuilt following conflict, unrest, or natural disaster. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war and poverty, and all who question if there is a home in your hearts. We pray for all who are sick, especially Denise, Isabel, Gary, those with ongoing prayer needs, and those we name before you now. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Assuring God, you accompany your people amid uncertainty and change. Uphold people in this community who have recently moved, changed jobs or schools, retired, 
or are going through transitions of any kind. Lead us in your ways. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For what else do the people of God pray? For our disciples who are traveling to Camden, New York this summer to serve as the hands and feet of Christ. And for the victims of senseless violence everywhere, especially this day, we pray for the people of Allen, Texas. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy Renewing God, you gather the saints at your heavenly banquet. We give you thanks for the care shown us by those who have gone before us. Grant confidence and comfort for all awaiting the place you have prepared. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us take a moment now and share a sign of the Lord's peace with each other.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sins, who in dying has destroyed death and his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to know Christ, broken and poured out for you.
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. getting there. We're still got a ways to go, but we're getting there. Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and to touch the word with your love. Amen. Please be seated as we have just a couple of announcements, not too many tonight, today. Um, thank you all of the musicians who shared their talents with us today, the youth and Jack, thank you so much. Tomorrow night is our council meeting. And on Thursday at 1230, in the conference room, we will having, having, we are having a Peach Festival meeting. So if you have time on Thursday afternoon and you want to come and see how the planning is going, we had a wonderful meeting um, on April 30th, lots of people. It takes, takes a village to run a, a peach festival. So if you're interested and you want to help, please show up. Thank you to um, Maisie and Kelly and Lucian for sharing their experience with us. Again, if you are willing and able to help support them, please speak to either John or Kelly after the service. I'm sure they'll be in the back enjoying the refreshments. And thank you for all who were here visiting, supporting them, and supporting the mission trip. Are there any announcements for the good of our time together as a worshiping community? If not, I would invite you to stand in body or spirit. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. God.